Greetings, I'm Bob from Slipstream. Today we are going to look at ways to reduce your energy bill and show you some ways to save on water heating costs. We'll start by looking at lighting. A great way to save energy and money is to make sure that all of the bulbs in your home are LED or light emitting diodes. LED light bulbs use at least 75% less energy than incandescent bulbs. They last up to 25 times longer, are brighter, emit very little heat, and are cool to the touch. They're extremely durable and are great for outdoor use. LED bulbs come in a wide range of bulb types and most are dimmable. LED light bulbs do not contain mercury or other hazardous chemicals and are recyclable. When replacing your bulbs, make sure to look for the Energy Star label on the box. Energy Star rated LEDs are tested and certified to produce higher quality performance and efficiency. You can use this chart to help you select the right bulb for your fixture. When selecting LED bulbs, remember to look at lumens instead of watts to gauge the brightness of the bulb. The higher the number, the more light that is emitted. Light color is measured on a scale known as Kelvin. The lower the Kelvin number, the more yellow the light will look, while a higher number will have a more bluish look. Here's a chart to help you think about the color light that might suit your needs. Do you still need help choosing the right Energy Star rated LED bulb for your home? Take a look at energystar.gov slash products slash choose a light for help selecting bulbs for your home. Did you know that many consumer electronics like TVs and computers continue to draw power even though they're turned off? You can save energy and money by installing an advanced power strip. There are several types of advanced power strips, but they all operate by shutting off the power supply to devices when they are not in use. The advanced power strip below is called a master controlled power strip. When a primary device, such as a TV, is turned off or on, the power strip automatically turns off or on some of the devices plugged into the power strip. Now I will show you how to set up a master controlled power strip. Start by plugging in your primary device, such as a TV, into the outlet marked Control. Next, plug in other devices like a gaming console or DVD player into one of the outlets labeled Switched. Now your DVD player and gaming console will only draw power when the TV is turned on. You will want to have your DVR and cable box plugged into the outlets labeled Always On. Keep in mind, advanced power strips are not to be used for large appliances like refrigerators or heaters. They are for consumer electronics only. Next, we'll look at the refrigerator and see if there are ways to save energy there. What I've done is place the thermometer in the compartment to take its temperature. We would like to see it at 37 degrees for optimal food safety and storage. Here we see 45 degrees. While that may save us some electricity, it will cause food to spoil quicker, leading to unsafe conditions for us and our family. So I want that set to 37 degrees. Now we'll take a look at the freezer. That should be set at zero degrees for maximum storage safety. Here we've got about 25 degrees or so. So this is too warm. Both these units are set at too warm a temperature. So we may take a look at the thermostat or take a look at the coils to clean them. Or in this case, let's look at the seals at the bottom. We notice that the seals don't sit properly. That could be causing air to come in and causing deficiencies. Replacing seals may be very difficult to do and may require a service technician. I mentioned cleaning the coils earlier, and if your refrigerator is an older model, the coils on the back of the refrigerator may be exposed. Make sure they are dust and debris free by vacuuming them with your vacuum cleaner. Newer refrigerators have sealed backs and they will not be able to access them. 
However, it is definitely important to make sure that there is room around your refrigerator for proper airflow, and you will want to vacuum the vents annually or more frequently if you have pets. In this section, I'm going to talk about water saving devices, namely faucet aerators and shower heads. You see here, I removed the aerator from this sink and going to test the water flow without the aerator. It gives me an idea of comparative flow rates. I'm using the stopwatch feature on my phone in order to do the testing and you can do the same or use whatever device you may have. So I run it full blast and now I'm going to be timing how long it takes to fill this quart jar. What I'm finding is it takes about a little over four seconds to fill this quart jar. That's going to work out to about a flow rate of four gallons per minute, which is definitely higher than what we would want to see. Now I'm going to put the aerator back and then we'll test it with the existing aerator. First of all, I make sure that the rubber washer is free of debris and that the aerator screen itself is free from any crud that might be in there. Then I'm going to replace that. Now, generally you can just do this hand tightening. You don't need to use a wrench, but if you do, use a protective cloth or a piece of leather to keep from marring up the finish. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit of blue dye just to give you a chance to be able to see the water being filled. Get my stopwatch set up again. And then we'll rerun this test, filling that quart jar. And you can use whatever jar you size you want. So you can see it takes a little bit longer than last time. And what I get, a little bit over eight seconds, almost eight and a half seconds to fill that up. Here the other faucet, four seconds. That's about a four gallon per minute flow rate. Optimal is between two and two and a half gallons per minute on the kitchen sink. This is going to be very important for you when you're heating with electricity as that will be quite a bit of savings for you. Back to that aerator. If your existing flow rate is even lower than that, take a look at the screen inside the aerator. Make sure it's clean. Make sure there's no debris or little chunks of stone or calcium in there. You can dip that into a a solution of vinegar and water and they'll help clean it. Now we are going to look at shower heads. Before you get started, check to see if your shower head needs to be replaced by using the same method as we showed you in the faucet aerator section. Here we have an example of an energy saving shower head. Standard shower heads have a flow rate of around 2.5 gallons per minute, and as you see, this one has a flow rate of 1.5 gallons per minute. A flow rate of 1 to 1.5 gallons per minute is optimal in the shower. Switching to a water-saving shower head can save you money, especially if you heat your water with electricity. It takes about twice the expense to heat with electricity as it does with gas. If it is hard to get the shower head off, use the pliers and something to protect the fixture like a washcloth. This will prevent the pliers from scratching the finish of that fixture. First start by tightening by hand, then if needed, tighten with the pliers. Next, let's take a look at your home's hot water temperature. We can determine your home's hot water temperature as you do an everyday task like washing the dishes. Once you have some water in the sink, turn your tap to full hot. Now let's take the temperature of the water by using a kitchen thermometer. A safe temperature is around 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Temperatures above 120 degrees Fahrenheit can be dangerous to the elderly, small children, and infants as their skin is more sensitive. At 140 degrees Fahrenheit, water can cause third degree burns in children in one second and in five seconds for adults. If you find that the water coming from your tap when set to full hot is greater than 120 degrees Fahrenheit, you will want to turn down the temperature on your home's water heater. If you have determined that the water temperature in your home is too hot, then you'll want to turn down the thermostat on your water heater. 
On this gas water heater, you'll notice that there are no numbers to help us, so we want to turn that down incrementally. Turn it down step by step over the course of a day or two until we reach the desired temperature. Electric water heaters are a little trickier. Start by turning off the power to the unit, which is generally at the breaker panel. Then remove the access plate and insulation. Using a plastic handled screwdriver, turn down the temperature setting to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Keep in mind that electric water heaters often have two panels. You will need to turn down the temperature in both places. Well, thank you everybody for watching. We hope you learned some easy ways to improve your comfort and increase your manufactured home's energy efficiency.